Welcome back to Global LPG Conversations. My name is David Appleton and I am working at Argus Media in LPG. And today I'm joined by James Gooder. He's our VP for Crude and also for African Markets. James, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks, David. How are you doing? Excellent. Now, you have just come back from Cape Town, I believe, and you were at the uh, ARDA conference. So, so what is that, firstly? Uh, yeah, it was my first work travel in over two years like a lot of people so it was good to see some people in 3d and have some real face-to-face -face conversations this is the african refiners and distributors association um it's the biggest downstream association in africa they take uh, they their members include refiners of course also uh, distributors and all kinds of uh, other oil companies and traders um and uh, service providers and uh, media organizations like us. And um, the theme of that conference was the energy transition, which is a trendy word in a lot of conferences at the moment. Um, but energy transition means something different in Africa, in much of the north or the developed world mature economies. It's about um, decarbonizing um, and moving to renewables and that kind of thing. But in Africa, energy transition is more about um, getting the access to energy. And the LPG is a major part of that, um, bringing LPG to communities across Africa where traditional fuels like firewood and, and other unhealthy ways of um, creating energy are still in use, causing deforestation, public health problems. So LPG is definitely a big agenda item in Africa, and it was a big theme at this conference. Okay, very interesting. And then, um, regards to the specifics about the, what you were working on during the the conference, I'm guessing that the pricing of LPG came up as, as quite an important topic within that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, price is kind of a barrier to entry in a lot of um, developing markets. But uh, as listeners to this pod will know there have been very creative solutions across the world and these are starting to be implemented in Africa. Uh, a lot of pricing in particularly South Africa where the regulated price is based on the Saudi contract price, so the Mideast export um, benchmark if you like, plus uh, an Argus assessed freight rate to South Africa. That um, linkage to the LPG market um, has helped to grow that market down there. It's really kind of built up over the last couple of years since this change in pricing has taken place. Uh, but what it doesn't reflect is today's reality of where product is flowing from so much of the uh, imports into South Africa, which will become more important because a lot of their refineries are closing down. Uh, it's coming from the Americas, from the United States, from Chile, and also from other parts of Africa like Nigeria. So um, it's... Uh, pricing linked to more expensive Eastern benchmarks, whereas cheaper product is available coming from Western markets. I see. Yeah, that's an interesting dynamic that we've seen over the, the past uh, couple of years since South Africa has moved into this internationally linked benchmark rather than something more domestic as they had before. You mentioned Nigeria there, and, and just that's a, a good segue to obviously the biggest market in West Africa. Um, and uh, we've had a lot of conversations over the past uh, few months and year with uh, important uh, people in the in the industry uh, from Nigeria. Um, what's going on there in terms of their, their plans for LPG? Well, um, Nigerian, the, the Nigerian market has grown a great deal. I think it's grown, it's multiplied five times in the last uh, eight years or so. And that um, is down to a big focus from, from government down, the, the vice president, as uh, office uh, has a special LPG task force and they've been um, working very hard to increase the penetration of LPG into into the Nigerian market with some success. Um, the latest uh, decision or uh, initiative there, because of course Nigeria major consumer, I think uh, 1.3 million tons a year, um, but also a significant exporter. Um, and one of the initiatives happening now is to divert as much of possible, as much as possible, of that domestic production back into the domestic market uh, rather than export. So it remains to be seen just exactly how that will play out, because of course you have a number of 
um, large state controlled players, but you also have uh, independent companies, majors operating there as well. Uh, so it may take some time, but the focus now is is is, bring, is keeping as much butane in particular um, in the Nigerian markets, and also some of that propane production is um, is going to be targeted at the, uh, the nascent yeah. auto <laughs> gas market. Right. Okay. And then um, again, there with a with the the pricing for that Nigerian product, obviously that will be a decision for for the government and for the, the players there. But um, what broadly are the options that that they they have that they have how they could price that domestic LPG? Well, because LPG was really uh, traditionally a kind of byproduct of the production of, of crude oil and uh, and so on. Um, Nigeria initially was a, an export market and uh, the United States was the target of uh, its exports um, for many years. So the traditional pricing benchmark for Nigeria has been um, the Mont Bellevue United States domestic price reference because that's what they were competing with. Now, of course, Nigeria is becoming a major importer and is taking LPG from various places, including the United States. But um, it's also taking supply from Europe and from other places, depending on arbitrage economics. So there is a feeling, uh, a growing sense in Nigeria that the old uh, pricing templates may be ready for some revision. Um, of course, in the Atlantic Basin, the Argus Sif Ara large cargo's price is an important benchmark. But as I've said, that's not necessarily the only uh, source of supply. So Argus um, has, has come up with a import parity index, which uh, in essence is designed to reflect the most competitive source plus freight, uh, or rather including freight, to Nigeria between the United States and Europe. Uh, most competitive, that is, from the point of view of a consumer. Because the idea is, if you're a domestic producer, uh, you are competing with imports, and therefore those are setting the marginal price. So the Argus West Africa butane price has become uh, an important reference for that market, and we're starting to see discussion of uh, usage of it in contracts uh, in the near future. So that's uh, a big um, uh, change in a market that hasn't seen much change in the way pricing is done for a long time. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. It will be uh, <clears throat> good to watch how that evolves going forward. And obviously, we're talking about prices at a time when we've seen global crude and LPG benchmarks reach, you know, decade or decade plus highs. Um, what do you think are going to be the impacts of that in the near term? Is this a concern for markets in Africa where I think a lot of the consumers are relatively price sensitive? Yeah, that is a concern, and a lot of our clients uh, and you know, subscribers to Argus Information across the con continent have come to us to ask, um, you know, how how are these kinds of things managed in other markets? I mean, of course, one blunt tool is subsidy. Um, LPG tends not to be subsidised in Africa. Though there are schemes to help people with the cost of setting up with cylinders and so on, um, but subsidy uh, in other commodities, particularly gasoline in uh, in Nigeria, has proved a real drag on development and a big waste of public resources. So it's not necessarily the right tool. Um, there are other um, elements that are being considered, whether some of the taxes and fuel duties can be managed or reduced during periods of high prices, as we're seeing at the moment. Of course, LPG prices are not exactly pegged to, but they tend to follow the trend set by the wider hydrocarbons complex and oil driven by diesel has been extremely strong in the wake of the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and remains elevated now, though prices have started to come off as some hopes of uh, a negotiated solution to that conflict start to surface, but it's still far from certain that that's going to be the short-term outcome. Prices of crude are above $100 still. Prices of diesel are significantly higher than that. 
and an LPG has been dragged up, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats, including LPGs. So there are concerns about this, but there are also signs that the market, particularly for LPG, might not be as tight as these prices uh, suggest. There is still plenty of supply on the market. And in time, particularly if people are using competitive price indexes that reflect you know, real physical fundamentals, uh, then in time those prices should uh, should reach a, a level where it's a bit more manageable for consumers. Right. It's, yeah, that makes sense. I guess uh, the re- the reality is is that when we have these these high prices, there will there will be some. Uh, demand destruction and it's really unavoidable and uh, just putting Africa to one side for a second we are hearing the same thing in some markets in Europe uh, where uh, people are are trying to reduce their their use of not just LPG but other other products so um, I think really it's a question of the market or or at least the consuming side of the market sitting tight and trying to ride out um, the 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 price storm for, for the time being, and then seeing how things are in in a couple of months. Uh, but but hopefully we'll we'll see things uh, calm down uh, somewhat in the near future. Great. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think we'll uh, finish things off there for today. Thanks very much, James. Pleasure. Good to be with you. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll do this again. I'm sure in in a few months' time uh, when we have more developed developments from the market. Great. Thanks everybody.